Good afternoon, everybody. It is Bowtie Tuesday. I'm Mike, the Bowtie Writer, so let's talk some writing. It's going to be fun today. So, story time. A few years ago, I was working on a historical fantasy novel. Uh, Wizards wanted to kill Lincoln. It was pretty cool. I was super excited about it. It was going to be great. And it was going really well. Chapter 3. Chapter 3. Chapter 3. I mean, I was just banging through this draft. Whoa! I wonder if I could learn how to juggle. Do you have ideas for the novel, Mr. Dinosaur? It was so successful that I decided, well, you know, I've got a little bit of time, so let me go ahead and dive into some craft books. Ever since then, I've really been a big advocate that learning from other writers is one of the most important and easiest things that you can do to really try and hone your craft. I've already done one video about some of the different important reference books out there, and it's been so well received that today I wanted to talk about eight more good reference books that writers should look into. Alright, number one on our list is called Save the Cat by Blake Snyder. So this is actually a book about screenwriting, but one of the things that Snyder does very well is he goes down and he breaks out three acts structured very, very systematically. Here are the important pieces, here are their important turning points, plus he has lots of really good examples throughout. He's also got some really useful handouts about important beat charts. So while this is a book that is actually designed for screenwriters, the kind of systematic breakdown of plot is something that is very, very applicable to novelists. In fact, the method is so general that there is a follow-up book literally called Save the Cat Writes a Novel. Um, that is an interesting book. I confess I literally got this in the mail Sunday, so I haven't had a chance to read it, but these methods are applicable to something that novelists could see. If you're having trouble with your plot, Save the Cat or Save the Cat Writes a Novel could be an excellent place to start to try and help get you back on track. Up next on this list, so I, I don't know about you all, but for me, whenever I'm about partway through the first draft, I kind of look back, I thumb back through my characters, and I realize that, first of all, everybody shrugs, and everybody nods. Like, shrugging and nodding. Shrugging and nodding. Maybe there's a lot of blinking involved, too, but that's about it. That appears to be all that my characters end up doing. Uh, to help with that, a book that I found to be utterly indispensable is actually the Emotion Thesaurus. The Emotion Thesaurus, this is written by Angela Ackerman and Becca Pugsley. Um, this is a really fascinating book. So, so what it is, when you actually thumb through it, uh, it is lists of common emotions. And when you thumb through it like that, that seems really kind of boring, but not only is there a list of what each emotion is, but there's a list of the physical signals, how it might manifest, the internal sensations that the character might have, the mental response the character might have if they're going through this emotion, um, cues if this is a particularly acute manifestation of it, um, cues if it's suppressed, plus there's writer's tips for it. Basically, any emotion that your characters could have, this book is a wonderful trove to go through and brainstorm new ways to show that emotion. Um, it really, really helped open up my palette so that I could try to show the different emotions my characters were experiencing with way more subtlety than just shrugging or shrugging sadly, which is what I was really leaning on for quite a while. So um, there's a whole series of books uh, that are like the emotions, the source, the positive trait, the source, the negative trait, the source. But if you get only one of them, the emotions, the source is a fantastic reference because it helps you display some of the emotions your characters are experiencing uh, really, really well. It's a great resource. Speaking of resources, the next resource on my list is a fantastic resource for world building that I don't think a lot of people know about, so I, I, I really try to take the chance to give it some love whenever I can. This book is called The Language Construction Kit by Mark Rosenfeld. 
Now, this is actually a book that started out originally as a blog post, and it was so popular that he self-published it as a book and really expanded the contents on it. And it is exactly what it sounds like. It is a guide to creating your own language. If you write any sci-fi or fantasy, sooner or later, you realize that having a way to systematically make names or to create lines of dialogue that are coherent is actually a really, really useful resource to have, just to add some really nice extra level of consistency to your story. Um, and this book is an incredible resource for that. So it goes over everything. Uh, linguistics, syntax, uh, phonemes and pronunciations, the physiological aspects and pronunciations of it, how to actually write your language, how to write your language useful if you're trying to come up with it, how to come up with words. There's oh, so much that goes on in this book. Now, I will tell you that while it is in depth, you can also get by with just the first few chapters where he talks about sounds and how to come up with a basic naming language for your story. So while this thing is like a pretty in-depth 300 pages, you don't need all of it. All of Mark Rosenfelder's stuff is very, very elaborate world building. There's also a sequel, The Planet Construction Kit, so uh, feel free to check out any of his stuff. He's great for deep dives into your world building. So, for some people, um, revision and self-editing becomes very, very easy. Like, they're just very, very good at diving in and dissecting what they need to change and how they can make it better. For me, it did not come easy. It was very, very difficult. I had a very tough time with it because I just said I needed to make my writing better, and articulating precisely what that meant was really hard for me. Like, I wasn't sure what I was trying to do. Then I found this wonderful little book, Self-Editing for Writers. Now, it's a tiny little book. Uh, it's actually a bit older from 1993 or 1994. I found it at like our local half price books, but this thing was incredible. So it's written by two editors who worked in the publishing industry, and then they also created workshops starting in the 1980s to teach people how to edit. And so they bring their practice editorial lens to bear on this, and they systematically break down what sort of things you can be looking for, what sort of things you can be trying to test. And it gives you a precise language to articulate that instead of just make your language better. Um, I found it a very useful resource just to give me the language to articulate what I was doing. So uh, if you're having trouble doing some revision, I definitely recommend that this is a starting point that might help you get unstuck. All right, the next book on our list, this one is a super fun book. It is a doozy. It is called Wonder Book by Jeff Vandermeer. So if you don't know Jeff Vandermeer, he's the three-time winner of the World Fantasy Award, and also his book was the inspiration for the film Annihilation. Uh, the guy is an incredibly established and wonderful writer, and the thing that makes this book so unique is that when you look through a lot of other writing books, it's really dry kind of prose. That's not what you get with this. With this book, you get all sorts of colorful pictures, all sorts of pretty diagrams, cute cartoons that break down the concepts and the topics. So he's providing a really big overview of the writing process, but he does it in just a really, really fun and lighthearted way that makes it a very, very easy read. It's a great book to just kind of thumb through in between projects to read a little bit here or read a little bit there. But also, don't take the fact that sometimes it's kind of cartoony to mean that it's not serious, because that statement's just not true. There's a ton of wisdom here, and it's presented in a way that's incredibly accessible. I go back and reread this probably once a year and I learn something new every time about the craft of writing. Whether it's simple things about dialogue, an overview of plot, or a discussion of the hero's journey, there's a lot in here. All right, for number six on our list, this is a book that I've actually had experience with before. When I was young and stupid, I checked out this book from the library and I completely glossed over it. When I was older and I revisited it, I realized I was a complete idiot for doing so. This is 20 Master Plots by Ronald Tobias. I originally thought this was a book about formulas. Here's the cookie cutter approach you must take to make this book, and I hated formulas. Now that I'm older and wiser, I realize that this is actually a discussion of tropes, and it really helped me. Uh, for example, one of the plots in my stories was actually a rescue plot. And in this book, he breaks down what are the common elements, what's your common antagonist, what's your common protagonist, what are some common twists, what are the major tropes that you see in these kinds of stories. And I realized, structurally, I was missing an important element of that story. It helped me fix a major problem with the book. And so it does that for 20 of these different plots. It's very, very thorough, and it gives a nice bird's eye 
view of some of these common stories, so it's a great way to help give you a broad architecture of where your story will go. Now, if there's one thing I must warn you about, it's that he does give breakdowns also for, like, romance stories, but he... Mm, I wouldn't listen to those very much. Romance as a genre is its own incredibly well-developed genre, even if you're just writing a romance subplot. I would listen to romance authors first. So, I wouldn't listen to him for that particular part, but for everything else, it's a great bird's-eye view of some really common story tropes out there, and it's an excellent discussion of that. Number seven on our list is The Fire in Fiction by Donald Mass. And if that name rings a bell, well, it probably should. That is the Donald Mass who started the Mass Literary Agency. This is an agency that has over 150 clients, they sell at least 150 books a year, they have worked with multiple bestsellers over the few decades. Like, Donald Mass has been neck deep in the business side of writing for years. He knows his stuff inside and out. And he comes at it from a very different perspective, coming from, like, the agent side of things. So, this is a guy who's had staff, who's read lots of slush, he's also worked with a lot of successful authors, he worked with editors to see what they want, and so all all those pieces come together provide a very, very unique perspective from most other writing books. He is very eloquent, he is very concise, and he steps through over about nine chapters major elements of fiction pieces in each one of these chapters, and for each one he breaks down what are some important elements to it. How can you avoid basic mistakes? Are you doing this thing that's a basic mistake? What can you do to really spice up this particular element of the fiction? Um, it's a very, very thoughtful and in-depth book. It also comes at it from a completely different angle from most other author-written texts. So, I highly recommend this one. Number 8 on this list is From 2K to 10K by Rachel Aaron. This is an ebook that I'll be honest, when I first saw it, I just thought this was kind of a kind of a scam. Not not a scam, but like there's a whole ecosystem of writers who all they seem to write are books about writing and not actually anything else. And they're all promising you to make billions of dollars and be the next best bestseller, and you've got a gajillion dollar book inside of you, and and they're all just really light on craft and really heavy on the hyperbole. And I thought this book was one of those. Again, I was completely wrong. So first of all, she actually explains in her introduction that uh, Rachel Aaron, this was some changes she made to her own internal writing process. This was just some private changes she made for herself. But then as she kept going to conventions, people kept asking her about it. She, they kept asking her about it. They wanted to have this conversation. She was on panels about it. She kept describing it. And she got so tired of telling the same story that she finally just said, all right, I'm going to go ahead and just write an ebook of this and put it out there so that everyone can see it. I am so glad she did, because this book is a gem. So, the fire in the fiction, for example, is, is kind of abstract. It takes a, a larger view of things, and that's really good. I personally really enjoy that. But this book, the this book from 2K to 10K, this is a wonderful practical book if you are ready to roll up your sleeves and just dive in and just get to work. It is practical. It dives into the day by day. How does she plan? How does she outline? When she sits down to write, what does she do? How did she change from her original process? How did she track it? How can you track it? It's all incredibly actionable, especially if you're a newer writer who's starting out and you keep getting lost in the middle of your books, or you're just trying to figure out what does it look like when I sit down to write. You cannot go wrong picking up this book because it describes what a good typical day of writing is like and also her tricks that really smoothed out her workflow. So um, it is an excellent resource that helped me avoid some of the common pitfalls I had been developing. It is a wonderful book that I highly recommend picking up. All right. That's what I wanted to go over this week. I know that that's kind of a barrage of eight books really quickly. I've got all the stuff down below in the comments if you want to look up these individual books. Feel free to take a look. Um, and I, I do really think that craft books are really important. Um, like I kind of alluded to, like I was, I was stuck. Like I was, I was completely stuck 
on that historical fantasy. And it was really only by diving into as many craft books as I could get my hands on that I was finally able to overcome the blocks and articulate the problems that I was having. So um, I do really believe in the importance of these craft books. And if you're a writer, I think that you can never go wrong by trying to study some of the books that are out there. And so I, I hope that this is a useful selection. I hope that these books are useful to you. Um, I also know that the world of craft books is very wide, so if there's a book that I didn't mention that you feel like should be on this list, let me know down in the comments below. Like, I, I'm a huge dork for these. I could easily just not know it, and so I, I love learning about new craft books and seeing what also works for people. So, um, that's all I have for this week. I just wanted to kind of throw this out there because I wanted to pivot back towards some of the more crafty, nitty-gritty stuff out there, um, and starting with craft books is a great way to begin that. So um, I've got a lot more good stuff coming up the pipe. If you like what you saw, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, you know, that's that's all I have for today. Uh, you know, be kind to yourselves. Go and make something awesome. Okay. Take care, everybody.